ISIS bomb rockets. Well, not the ISIS that you think. It's just uh, ISIS is the brand, a particular style. Back in the early 2000s, they were using these to combat against the Shimano um, swine kind of, you know, hollow tech design. Um, so this is the knock, well, I'm say knockoff. It's its own brand, you know, Bontrager, FSA, some other other brands have used this particular bond bracket and how to get these, you know, cranks off. So without further ado, let's show you how to get this crank set off after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary out of used bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. So today I have a Trek 1200 and this has kind of like this splined kind of bottom bracket that kind of, it's not a square taper. A square taper is flat from four sides. This looks like a, a spine kind of thing, like multiple uh, ridges to it. I think, let's dive into this. A lot of these will have self-extracting bolts. Sometimes will take the crank off. This one does not. So this is gonna be a good show on what to do because you'll have to pull those bolts out and then you gotta use a self-extracting tool, bottom bracket or crank arm puller as they're called, to take this crank arm off. But before that, I like to take the pedals off and most pedals will take either a 15 millimeter um, box kind of wrench or sometimes they'll do an Allen. They can be either like a, a six or an eight or a five millimeter, but they usually will be on the inside. And that's if those outside ones don't work. So take off the pedals, just pedal forward, and that's what releases the pedal off. So that's how you get the pedal to come off. And do both sides. I just don't want those to get in the way and, you know, basically it hurt me <laughs> as I'm trying to do this, but sometimes you gotta put a lot of torque into this. And that's where it gets kind of scary. It's like, oh, am I gonna go too far? Um, sometimes, yeah, most times not. So these are eight millimeter. So I got a big, long eight millimeter. So I can hold it to release it. Sometimes I gotta prop my leg up on the fork to get a good edge. Or I can go old school. And what I do is take these straps, kind of a, really a good gold nugget. So this is my gold nugget. So you, what you wanna do is you take this strap, loop it around where the pedal was. That's why I take the pedal off, or one of reasons. And you can take this strap, and this basically, you can get this to hold its place, and that secures the crank. And I'm gonna be using my leg here ugh, to put some extra force and torque on that. And that's how I get this particular crank bolt out. And this is the bigger one here, or the smaller one, but you'll need to use a crank puller to fit that. We're talking about fitting the spine part here. And the crank puller I'm using is from Park. It's the CCP44, meaning it has the bigger end here that's gonna go in. How this works is, is you thread this portion in first, and that secures it, right? Then as you tighten this, it wedges, pushes up against the actual bottom bracket, which pulls the crank arm off. So first you want to Thread this in here. And this is where it's very important not to cr cross thread. This is alloy, so you don't wanna cross thread those threads. You wanna make sure you get it go in there smoothly. And also you wanna tighten it with either a crescent wrench or a box wrench. Like so, so it's finger tight. And just make sure it's secure. Then I go ahead and do the same thing here, wrap this around so it holds itself. As I'm tightening this up, it's actually pushing up against that bonnet bracket and it's gonna pull that crank arm off. And the reason why these are short handled is you're supposed to be able to do this with the pedal on. I find it a pain in the butt. I'd rather take the pedal off and have more leverage. So, I made a cheater. 
And this cheater gives me the leverage I need uh, off of an old Gary Fisher frame that was defective and cracked. What that does is pulls that crank right off like so. And and this is the you know this is the ISO, which is kind of like a spine spine kind of thing. Um, ISO is another one. This you know the Shimano ones have like the multiple teeth too. So same concept, same tool for both. But that's what makes this one kind of tricky. So as I'm taking that off, you can see the spine portion there. And now this crank is ready to be washed, put in a sonic cleaner. And then you can have access to actually start pulling the bottom bracket out if you want to take the bottom bracket out. Um, just repeat on the left side, same kind of thing. I use the strap to hold it in place again and be able to pull that crank arm off, like so. Tighten that down. And careful, there'll be a little washer you want to make sure you get out of there. This one's connected, but sometimes it's not. Gauge my tool back out so I can get it into the threads. So you want to make sure you can finger thread these in, finger tight. If you have problems with this, sometimes the first thread I'll have a hard time catching. Uh, one trick is, is using like a, a box knife or exact knife to kind of carve that alloy thread to catch, but you want to be careful when you do that. Reason being you want them not, you want to make sure these are tight all the way is if you don't, you'll only get half of the threads and instead of pulling the crank arm off, it'll strip the threads right out. And guess what happens after that? A whole bunch of sawing because you'll basically toast your crank arm and then you'll have to cut it and be able to you know grind it off so you can get that to release and pop off. Don't want to do that. So protect those threads as much as you can. And once you're in there, you can see how tight this is. <clears throat> Yep, cheater time. Smarter, not harder, right? coming slowly and when you put these back on you want to thread those grease those threads or the spine part the iso part like it's already greased already but that just makes it easier to take off in the future or for the next mechanic to do that job so that's the iso bottom racket here's the next one Okay, since once we got that crank arm off, that gives us opportunity to clean those, right? Now we have the bonnet bracket. Well, um, these bonnet brackets, you can still get them um, new. If you can find them on eBay used in good condition, you can do that too, but you need a special tool to take those off. Um, so old school, go back in the day. We used to have crappy tools like this, like just the hook kind of system that you kind of like, oh, let's see if we can get this off. Uh, and it's always tore up something. Um, there's other hook too. Sometimes on the older style cruisers, older 80s um, bikes, still need these tools. Once in a while I use them, but let me show you the tool you'll need. So, um, this one was actually a wrench force one, which is a proprietary of Trek, which is actually a snap on made these particular tools uh, for Trek, uh, branded under a wrench force. Um, but you can still find this from Park. They make this particular one that fits 
And what's cool about this, it fits right in those teeth here. So this is the you know, drive side. You always want to do the non-drive side first on these guys. And this is the fun thing. It's actually just a socket. So let's show you how to do that. So you got these teeth. It has a little bit of rubber washer here, a gasket to keep it from um, getting contaminants inside there. So um, like all the other bottom brackets, forward motion is to, un to loosen it up. Ah, they are tight, so, and that will help you get that cup side or the non-drive side off, and it's fitting those tools, and let me show you what that looks like. So, that's your cup, and those are your teeth, and those teeth just line up like so. And since it is a socket, and it distributes between all eight points of teeth you don't use that hook thing would be almost getting this thing impossible as you know so struggling just to get this side off so on to the next here's the drive side same thing forward motion since always oops, other way direction there you go always try to use leverage leveraging the bike you know hold it upright it's always your friend use it against itself and if you need to have a little extra help, a little bit of tapping will do. You know, some of these, I believe, were put on with like power tools overseas when they were built. So this one was actually built in the United States, but yeah, those guys are getting a little strong, angry. You know, feel it kind of give a little, and you're like, okay, we're good. But you want to make sure that tool is secure so you don't chew that teeth up. I'm pressure, putting pressure inwards the whole time. And keep in mind of these spacers. Um, if you get a new one and you need to put, you know, it doesn't have a spacer, you want to match those spacers because that pushes the crank set out to the appropriate distance on that. So there's that goopy mess. You'll see a lot of grease in there. So. So to clean these off, you don't want to put them, I don't plan on put them in an ultrasonic you know, tank, um, but so you can just use a little bit of purple powder power with water diluted. Um, I, you know, don't spray it on there like I just did, but just the rag and just kind of get all that gunk off. And here's the thing. So let's say you got the tool, took it apart, you need to replace it. Now what? What do I need to figure out? And they use these on mountain bikes too. So um, 68 shell is usually the road bike ones in this vintage. 72 is the mountain bike and that's the width of the bottom bracket there. And you'll see that 68 millimeter. And a lot of these will still have their tags, which would be great um, to be able to identify. And this is or 118. 118 is your standard triple with this type of binder bracket or the Holotech uh, Shimano ones. 118. Um, is it the 114, 115, somewhere around there? The smaller one is the double chain ring. This is a triple. So 118. Well, what if you don't have the stamp on there? Okay, so you can measure this point in millimeters with a ruler. Then so you have a metric ruler. So you measure this, the 38, or whatever, you know, it's the 72 or 38. Then the length is the 118. So you're measuring from here to here, 118. So if you have a pair of cal you know, measuring calipers, that helps too. So that's your two sizes. Um, the other one is English thread versus Italian thread. You really won't see too much of those in the United States, but if you're watching this overseas, that's gonna be the tricky bit. Um, you wanna make sure, you know, like the checks on this, it's like an English thread pattern. Um, the Italian, you get that one, you know it's not gonna fit. You'll, like, it won't, it's just the bigger diameter. Um, so it's not gonna fit, it, they don't cross-reference over. So once you have your new bond bracket, this one's fine, so we're not gonna replace it, but uh, once you get your new one, you wanna clean out all the old grease, and you wanna remember, 
right side versus left side is this is their two different directional threads. So you don't want to cross reference across thread this over. So just keep that in mind. Um, also, you know, you want to clean out the inside as well. If you're, you know, there's like a $300 tool, it's called a thread chaser, which will clean those threads up. But in this case, we don't need to. Um, I've in a pinch used, you know, a good bottom bracket shell to kind of thread it in there. If I had some boogered up ones or the bottom bracket was compromised, that's very rare. But just in case you need to, um, you can put a little bit of cutting oil in there and kind of thread it through if need be. Um, but in this case, we don't. So I'm gonna grab some lube and lube these up. Okay, where do we want to lube? So we got it clean here. So we want to put some grease on those threads there and there on both sides. Um, you can pre-lube on the outside here. Also the inside cup, it's usually a good spot. The reason you want to do all this is next time you need to remove this, it's not a chore or a bear. Okay, so we know this is the dry side. A lot of the times when you're actually reading the lettering, it's facing this direction most of the time. Um, with the Shimano uh, bottom brackets, that is the case. Um, with the ISOs, it could vary. Then you wanna guide those first through th uh, threads first, smoothly and gently, not forcing it. This is an alloy bottom bracket. It's gonna be a softer material than the harder um, shell, the bottom bracket. The bottom brackets is usually a, you know, a, a steel. So that's where you'll get that combination. So this is where you get, you know, sometimes you get some creaking and weird noises. Either this is loosened up inside and is you know, fighting or making weird noises with a little aluminum because both materials have a different flex to them. So that's where you can find that, you know, sometimes that creak, or whatever. Um, I mean, believe me, I have chased the phantom creaks over many of years and sometimes it is the bottom bracket. So, so this is going backwards to tighten. Like if you're pedaling backwards, you want to do the drive side first, get that nice and tight. Then on to the cup side. Here we are at the cup side. I'm gonna slide that over, and you want it as well, lightly with your fingers. This one has a rubber gasket with this uh, Truvea, Truveda, Truvea uh, bottom bracket, which is they also have their own cranks, which is Bontrager or con uh, con uh, can't talk. They um, basically, they made a whole bunch of cranks and other companies branded them, basically white labeled them. So um, Truveda is one of those. So the bottom bracket tells you what the crank is, even though it's stamped with bond tag on it. So if you come across like a, you know, a Truveda crank set and you're trying to put it on a, I don't know, track and you're trying to match a bomb tracker. Keep in mind that's probably the same thing, just different logo on the outside. So boom, there's your bomb bracket. All greased up, lube and ready to go. The lube actually, the actual grease actually is a preventative layer too against corrosion and so forth. Because sometimes you get water that drains into the bottom bracket area and doesn't seep out this little hole. Well, this one's actually threaded, covered up with the, you know, the thread, uh, with the thread guide. And let me show you how to put the crank back on. So installing these, you want to put some grease on the ISO, ISO bottom bracket spline parts so you can get them off easier next time. You need to take this guy, line it up, bolts goes through in here you want to make sure you get a allen that's long enough to get some leverage on it that's why these are a little bit better to use and uh also if you don't drop it in here don't oh, anywho the leverage pieces as you can see and you also want to look towards you. These will bottom out. So you will know when you're done tightening. As it goes up right up against the, uh, the bottom bracket plate.
right there. And when you put the other side, keep a member of the opposite direction so you're not pedaling both feet forward, which I do remember seeing a bike during a bike show back in the 90s, which was kind of odd that the crank arms were both the same way, so you just kind of like hopped every time you took a pedal. <laughs> Needless to say, I don't think they took off in the States. And I'm pretty sure the company is no longer around. So, anywho, little sidebar there. Uh, same thing on this side. You just tighten until it bottoms out on the bottom bracket. You will know when you're done. Windows are flush. Like so. There you go. There's your bottom bracket. Installed, also the crank arms reinstalled, ready to go. Um, yeah, on to the next part. If you're doing your drivetrain clean, you gotta put your derailleurs back on and your chain cassette on the rear wheel. But this actually takes care of the bottom bracket of the ISIS bottom bracket.